some were very nervous. I happened to have the opportunity to stand on the Mount of Olives. And I've got a few pictures I wanted to show you. Now, this is the Pater Nostra. Uh, this is actually uh, where we began our tour on the Mount of Olives. There's a church there called the Church of All Nations. And at the Church of All Nations, there's believed that there, there is a cave in that area where Jesus would go and be with his disciples and where he taught them the Lord's Prayer, the prayer that we prayed this morning. Next, if you would, my friend. And this is the church that was built uh, hundreds of years ago. It was destroyed during the Crusader period. But it was the walls were built back, but they never put the ceiling back over. And all around are uh, plaques and mosaics of the Lord's Prayer in just about every known language in the world. This is a beautiful place. Next, if you don't mind, please, sir. Overlooking from the Mount of Olives, you see in the distance the hillside and countryside, the topography of Jerusalem. If you would, next, please, sir. From the Mount of Olives, as you can see, that this is the original road that leads down. There wasn't steps in Jesus' day. Uh, I'm glad we had steps, but we know this is the original path that Jesus took simply because there's only one road up the mountain and down the mountain. There's not a, another. And if you would go to the next place and the next picture, it may be hard for you to see, but in the distance, you see the Dome of the Rock. That is where the Temple Mount was in the temple in Jesus' day, just to the right of the Dome of the Rock you'll see the eastern gate. Uh, during the Muslim, Muslim occupation, that eastern gate was closed up. And then they put a graveyard in the Kidron Valley because if the Messiah's gonna come back, he won't walk through a graveyard because he'll be defiled and considered unclean. So let's just put graves all over the Kidron Valley. And if that doesn't do it, let's just brick up the gate so he can't get through it. Right. Right. Next picture. Right at the foot of the Mount of Olives is the Garden of Gethsemane. This is where at the end of the week, Jesus ends up after he celebrates the Passover with the disciples. Next picture. And it's a beautiful garden. There's uh, rosemary bushes all over the place, palm trees, fig trees. Next picture, right in the middle, you'll see a petrified fig tree that still blooms. And it is believed by those who take care of the garden that this fig tree is over 2,000 years old. It was probably one of the original trees when Jesus was in the garden. Jesus told his disciples to pray while he went just a little further, a stone's throw. He found them asleep, asked them to pray again. Next picture. And he went to another spot, next picture, in the back of the garden, and there's a monument, they believe, where Jesus went to the back of the garden and where he prayed. Luke tells us that that prayer was so intense. The pressure and the stress all was upon Christ that he began to sweat drops like blood. Hallelujah. Next picture. You can see right through the Mount of Olives, right through the fig trees, right across to the old city wall and the Eastern Gate where Jesus would have entered after uh, going through the Kidron Valley. Now all the graves were not there at that time. That was a later period. So it was just an open pathway down the Mount of Olives into Jerusalem and where he would spend the next few days. Next picture. And we're going to leave it right there just for a moment. Uh, the significance of the timing of this event at Passover is unmistakable. <coughs> the day Jesus enters Jerusalem was the 10th of the first month. 
five days before the Passover celebration. This would mean that while the very same day the Jews were selecting their lambs to be brought into their home, Jesus, the true Lamb of God, rides into Jerusalem, symbolically chosen by the people to be their Messianic King. Jesus, the true Lamb of God, rides in. Also, just as the lambs were brought into the homes of the people for the next four days, Jesus came into the temple court. He went into his father's house. Read the Gospels for the next four days to heal, to deliver, <clears throat> to teach about the kingdom of God where all the people could examine him. And trust me, the scribes and the Pharisees and the religious people of that day had him under microscope. All of this was fulfilled uh, to fill the prophecy of Zechariah that stated, Rejoice greatly, O daughter of Zion. Shout, O daughter of Jerusalem. Behold, your king is coming to you. He is just and having salvation, lowly, and riding on a donkey. But sadly, as the week progressed, Jesus didn't fit their understanding of a ruling conqueror or Messiah who had come to deliver them from Roman oppression and rule and set up Jerusalem once again as the great city of David. Jesus would not bring about the true political deliverance that they desired, yet they did not understand the true deliverance and peace that Jesus would bring them through his atonement, his death, and his resurrection. You see, five days later, some of the same crowd who had shouted praise God and Hosanna to the highest uh, at his arrival would now shout for the death of the Lamb of God. Please don't miss this. Please don't miss this. On the eve of the start of the 15th day, when the Jews were to kill the lamb for the Passover celebration, Jesus breathed his last breath and died as the pure spotless lamb of God on the cross outside of the city for mm. all to see. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. This is a holy, holy yes. week. It's no wonder to me why in Luke's gospel that the scriptures tell us that when Jesus was coming down the Mount of Olives, Amen. when he can see the city in the background and he sees the temple and he hears the people of great shouts of joy and praise that blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, Hosanna in the highest. Hail, King Jesus. Come deliver us. Come save us. Hallelujah. That they had missed God's invitation. Not just that day, but for years. For years. The, the, the prevailing question of Palm Sunday was shouted out by the people of this day as they, and, and still is shouted out today, I believe. The question of Palm Sunday still remains the question for us to consider on this Sunday, well over 2,000 years ago. Who is this man, Jesus? This was not simply a matter of, uh, of interest for the residents of Jerusalem, I don't believe. This is a question that is still being asked today and answered today by thousands all over the face of the world. Who is Jesus? Jesus. And why should we pay attention to his teachings? Why do we gather here on Sunday morning? Why do you try and live out your faith after you leave this building? Who is Jesus? And why have so many people put their lives under his authority and even more rejected his truth? Who is this man? In the 21st century, there's an increasing number of Americans and people all over the world who are disinterested in any form of religion altogether. 
Just here in America, and I read this poll this morning, the Gallup poll, 20%, only 20% of our nation attend worship services on a Sunday morning, every Sunday morning, 20%. 57% do not attend any religious service or have any affiliation with religion whatsoever. They're just not in church this morning. There are still people in every city and every town around the world who say, who is this? Who is this man? Who is this Jesus? And why should I listen to him? He's just a figment of the imagination of a group of people in a world full of many religions and many philosophies where people either believe that all religions are the same, it doesn't matter what you believe as long as you get there, or some vague spirituality is all they need or all they want, it's important for us to have an answer. It behooves us to be able to answer the question for ourselves, who is Jesus? <coughs> And I, I certainly don't want to be disrespectful of any other religions. I just want to simply say this. This is my confession. This is my creed. I didn't write it, but I love it. My hope is built on nothing less than Jesus' blood and righteousness. I dare not trust the sweetest frame, but wholly lean on Jesus' name. On Christ the solid rock I stand. All other ground is sinking sand. Who is this man who is able to remain relevant in his teachings and receive the reverence from those who hear his voice, who hear his teaching? Who is this man who can take men like Peter, James, and John who were fishermen and turn them into mighty disciples that turned the world upside down on his behalf? Who is this man who can take a Pharisee named Saul on the road to Damascus and change not only his name, but to change a man who was seeking to destroy Christianity into a herald of the gospel and one who wrote much of the New Testament? Who is this man? Isaiah says that he's the wonderful counselor, the mighty God, the Prince of Peace. He is the Almighty Father. He is the one whom John the Baptist preached when he came out of the wilderness that said, Behold, is the Lamb of God that comes to take away the sin of the world. I'm not worthy to stoop and unlatch his sandals. I baptize you with water under repentance, but there's one coming mightier, more powerful than I. And when he comes, he'll baptize you with the Holy Ghost Amen. and with fire. Amen. He is the man that they loved on Palm Sunday, condemned, killed, and buried on Good Friday. But praise God, God rose him on Sunday, Easter Sunday morning. And now he has power and authority. And he Amen. is Lord over all. Who is this man? Caesar's dead and almost forgotten, but Jesus still sits on the throne. The high priest Caiaphas, who schemed to have him killed, is a minor footnote in all of history. But Jesus remains the central figure in, in the world today. Pontius Pilate washed his hands with water, but Jesus washed our soul clean with his precious blood. Amen. Jesus, Judas got 30 pieces of silver and then committed suicide. But Jesus was crucified and buried, but now sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. Who is this Jesus? Well, let me conclude by saying that just Jesus is the one whom we triumphantly sing, all hail the power of Jesus' name. Let angels prostrate fall, bring forth a royal diamond, and crown him Lord of all. Who is this Jesus? He is Lord. He is the Lord of heaven, and he is the Lord of earth. He is the Lord of our past. He is the Lord of our present, and he'll be the Lord of our future. Hallelujah. He's the Lord of the living and the dead. He is the Lord from the guttermost to the uttermost. He is Lord of all. And next time someone asks you who is this man, whether he or she speaks with contempt 
or with amazement, this is what you can tell them. He is Lord. He is Lord. He is risen from the dead. And he is Lord. Every knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. Amen. That is who Jesus is. Yes. Who do you say he is? Yes. Amen. Who do you say he is? Glory to God. Let us pray. Thank you for Jesus. Thank you, Lord, that he came. Lord, not as a conquering king to deliver us out of some earthly bondage or oppression. We, we know we have abundant life and we're grateful for that. But Lord, the most important thing is he delivered us from the slavery of sin and death. Yes. Sin no longer has power. Sin no longer has reign. The enemy has been defeated. That he may walk around. He may cause havoc. He may, may even cause us hurt and pain. But he can't destroy our hope. He doesn't hold our future in his hands. He doesn't control where our final destiny is. Our faith in Jesus that he died on the cross for our sin. Raised by the hand of God the Father Almighty. And sent the Holy Spirit to live in our life. It is he who is King of kings, who is Lord of lords, that we give our allegiance to today. Come, King Jesus, and receive the honor and glory that your church deserves to give you. In the name of Christ our Lord, we pray. Amen. 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 Glory to God. I'm going to share a few announcements here. Megan Stern, as she is going to play for us, and then I'm going to give you the benediction. So the announcements. Uh, don't forget, again, uh, Chris, Dench, Clary, visitation from 4 to 4.30 here. Service starts at 4.30. Youth Passover celebration. Uh, today uh, at 3, we want to invite our youth, and if those are in the 5th grade and up, uh, uh, we, we bring, grandparents, bring, bring your, your youth. Parents, bring them today. Let them experience this wonderful uh, celebration. And I just want to simply say what a blessing it, it will be for Isaac and Angie and I. If you would like to sponsor youth today as they are going to experience the Passover celebration and catered fruit food from a taste of Jerusalem, the expenses run about, and I'm counting at least 10, and they run around $25 a youth. And since we don't have organizations that have raised money to go in a youth designated fund that I can draw out of, I'm just simply asking you if you would like to, if you would like to designate to the youth designated fund uh, and sponsor a youth for $25 or more, please do. If we get more of what we need, it'll stay in there and I can use it for the next uh, teaching experience. So thank you so much. I uh, also want to remind you that April the 7th, that's going to be the first Sunday uh, in April, Angie and I want to invite the ladies of the church to a luncheon, soup and salad. Doesn't that sound wonderful? At the same time, Jamie Broxson is going to be with us. Jamie is a Mary Kay representative. And Jamie is working hard to trying to get to the next level of her business one day. Hopefully that will become a new career move for her. And Jamie's going to be doing skin care. So you get fed, you get some good information, get to experience some good products, and maybe even take something home with you. You need to RSVP. Yes. Either Angie or I. If your ladies would like to come, we would love to have you. We want to, be, we want to support Jamie and uh, her in 
new business adventure. And she's doing such a wonderful, wonderful job. So don't forget to RSVP. Uh, in your bulletin, there are a number of activities that are coming up this week. Uh, and so please don't forget those Good Friday service this year. We're going to have two. At 10 a.m., there's going to be a brunch on uh, the Good Friday service. Uh, Good Friday this year here begins at 6 p.m. Traditionally, we've had it at 7. This year, it's at 6 p.m., so don't forget that. And then we have the children's uh, Easter party and egg hunt. All of that's coming up as well. And then sunrise service, 7.30, pancake breakfast afterwards. Yes. On practice for the last supper play, 5 o'clock in the chapel. Yes, Thursday night they're having uh, the Lord's Supper play and practice today. I think that's all that I have. And would you give Miss Megan your undivided attention? Rusty and Reggie, their birthday is on Wednesday. They're turning 23. Yeah, they're turning 23. Go in peace. The peace of God go with you this day. You are dismissed.
Look at guys. I did. Lot of people. Megan, great job. She did a great job. I told you, you can make it. You did great, Megan. Look at that. Lot of people. Diana. Javana. So much people. And Hello, happy Sunday. Happy Palm Sunday. Tapos na po kami. Bye guys, thank you. Thank you for watching. God bless all and stay blessed. The love of Christ. Tapos na po. Ang daming tao ngayon. Ina mo. Bye. God bless. Ikaw ang liwanag sa madilim na daan Ikaw ang siyang tandaw sa aking kinabukasan Ikaw ang bumabay sa aming pag-aaral Nahitirap sa buhay, ikaw ay nakaalala Jesus Christ, love and care ministry Kahit di ka nakikita, I always know your love for me Handang tumulong sa mga nangangilangan Sa iyong gabay, kami ay may natutunan Napakabuti ng inyong mga puso Sa mga tulong nyo, meron yung balik sa dulo Laki ng aming pasasalamat Laging dasalang malayo sa kahirapan Jesus Christ, love and your ministry Napakabuti ng iyong puso sa pagtulong di na huli Sana hindi magbago ang iyong pagkatao Tuloy-tuloy mo lang dahil lahat kami saludo Jesus Christ, love and your ministry Napakabuti ng iyong puso sa pagtulong di na huli Sana hindi magbago ang iyong pagkatao Tuloy-tuloy mo lang dahil lahat kami saludo Sa bawat pag-ising mo pagtulog Sa katauhan namin ikaw ang humubog Mga pangaral at salita mo sa amin ay tumatak Tinuring mo kami sa mundo na isang anak Di mo pinabayaan sa oras ng kahirapan Binusuping may kagutuman na nararanasan Ikaw ang tanging ina namin kaluman Diyos na ang bahalang magbalik sa iyong kabaitan Mga pangaral mo ang nagsilbi sa aming aral Nagbigay lapis at papel bumubuhit na parang anghel Nagpatayo ng simbahan ko sa pwede naming masilungan Maging takuhan ito'y binabalot ng kadiliman Salita ng Panginoon to ni Tanya Jesus Christ, love and good ministry Napakabuti ng iyong puso sa pagtulong di na huli Sana hindi magbago ang iyong pagkatao Tuloy-tuloy mo lang dahil lahat kami saludo Jesus Christ, love and good ministry Napakabuti ng iyong puso sa pagtulong di na huli Sana hindi magbago ang iyong pagkatao Tuloy-tuloy mo lang dahil lahat kami saludo Jesus Christ, love and good ministry Napakabuti ng iyong puso sa pagtulong di na huli Sana hindi magbago ang iyong pagkatao Tuloy-tuloy mo lang dahil lahat kami saludo Jesus Christ, love and good ministry Napakabuti ng iyong puso sa pagtulong di na huli Sana hindi magbago ang iyong pagkatao Tuloy-tuloy mo lang dahil lahat kami saludo